so I'm here with Koya. I'm just going to show you some of the stuff we're doing with place. Just so you and your daughters can get the basics. Yeah, you don't have to have the kibble that's in the little tiny ground there. Here, go ahead. Place. Good. Break. And I throw the food on the ground as motivation for her to go and follow that so that she breaks position. Because she has to know the difference between pointing to where I want her to go, the command, saying good job, which is the word good, for backing up the behavior that she's done for me, to then releasing her from that command, okay? I don't know why this TV volume keeps turning turning on. I apologize, I keep turning it off. Well, I'm trying to do a video and it keeps turning on, so I'm getting a little annoyed. <laughs> but um, this is just rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, doing over and over and over again. She does this um, twice a day at least, and she's doing um, on and off, on and off. She's catching on very well. She's been doing it for a long time, so she knows place very well, okay? So again, to get her off, because I didn't put her on there, I'm going to say place. Good. Break. So you get it. Place. Good. Break. And I'm just using your sweet potato treats right now. Place. Good. And break. <laughs> and place. Good. Good girl. And break. That's a good girl. Hey, face. Good. So any other little shenanigans that she does, she needs you need to ignore it. So if she's doing anything to manipulate you in any way, trying to get your attention, paw at you, bark at you, whatever, you ignore it, but you must be adamant that she stays there. Okay? So even in the event that I go over to the door here. no one there because I'm in the garage and no one's uh, knocked on the door today. Good. She has to stay put. So right over here is a door that people come in to um, come into the garage or whatever where you guys came in to drop her off. And I practice a lot of that. Um, I'll also practice going into my house with uh, the door drills there too because we get uh, Chinese food or, or pizza delivery once in a while. But this is like the jumping off point for getting a calm dog to start self-regulating so then I can get her outside. So I'm getting her outside now, I'm getting her exposed to more things. So now I can handle her without having to overcorrect her because she's calmer. And because she's calmer, I'll be able to do more with her and she'll be open to learning now. Whereas before she would have been just winging it and reacting to things, which would not have made her head clear. So she wouldn't have been able to process information properly. And then she would have just reacted. And unfortunately, most dogs in those cases do things in a negative way versus a positive way. So then we have to overcorrect or ignore the behavior and the behavior just gets worse and worse and worse over time. So once you kind of get a calm dog like this, then they're open to learning and you're able to do a lot more with them. Now, the one thing I will tell you though that I said that was important that when you come on the Monday and the Friday to not talk to her, not touch her, not do anything because there's quite a bit of energy that I felt when you guys came in. And you know, everyone's energy is different. That's not the way it is. But with her, that little mantra that I sent you, less is more, is really, really important to put in your back pocket, okay? So it means less affection less touching, less talking, you're going to get way much more from your dog than if you are constantly in her face, constantly touching her and constantly telling her what to do. You want her to be confident. And with that confidence and calmness comes her thinking for herself. Yes, she needs us for direction and she needs us for supervision to keep her safe and to keep her out of trouble because she is a dog and we're human. So she's going to be thinking different things than us. But she gets a lot from my cool, calm demeanor more than me being in her face and talking to her and touching her and getting her uppity. So a lot of times when a dog is barking or growling at someone or a little bit nervous or scared, people want to come over and they want to pet the dog. Ah, place, pet the dog. See how that little bit of affection made her break position. So I set her up to fail unintentionally by going into her personal space meant that she was going to fail, right? Because she's still learning. Good? <laughs> she's so cute. What you want to be able to do is give her the guidance from you and the discipline required, if required, 
to be able to let her know in certain situations that she feels uncomfortable, that you're going to advocate for her, that you have her back, but you will be the one taking care of it, not her. So when a dog is reactive on leash, that is a relationship problem. She is taking over because she believes that you or your daughters cannot handle yourself in a way that she feels is efficient. So then she takes a step and obviously taking a step forward means that there's going to be conflict because she's a dog versus a human. We're more intelligent than a dog. So the choices that she's going to make are not always going to be positive or, or good, but we're trying to set her up the best we can to make sure that she makes good choices in the beginning. So for example, if I'm at pet value and someone sees her with me, like I did the other day, if someone just kind of comes up and starts kind of working towards her, I'm going to move in front of her and block that person. I'm not going to allow them to just come into her personal space because we teach our children at a young age, stay away from strangers. Don't talk to strangers. It's not safe. There's stranger danger. So why are we not teaching our dogs and implementing the same thing with our dogs? Stranger danger. A stranger coming into a dog's personal space is an invasion of privacy. A dog doesn't perceive things the same way that we do. We do a lot of things as a human. On an emotional level, dogs do not do that. So we have to always be keeping in mind how we can set our dog up for success versus failure, okay? So we're always advocating you know, if someone wants to ask permission to um, touch our dog and we think our dog's going to handle that situation okay, then what I would do is I would offer the person the food and then I would then let that person, Koya, let that person invite Koya into their personal space and then she is in control of that herself and that choice making. She can choose whether she wants to go to that person and receive that affection and that treat or she can choose to stay with you, and that's quietly telling you that she's not comfortable for whatever reason, not today. And then you simply just tell the person, not today, we're just gonna walk away, no big deal. But you're always gonna be advocating for your dog, okay?